Here's how to set up a gradient mesh so that you can create some very realistic looking vector drawings using the gradient mesh method. First of all, I've gone ahead and drawn off the basic shape of my apple and, and I've created a gradient mesh inside of that object shape. Notice that when I place it on top of it, it fits perfectly. Now what I'm going to want to do is select each individual point and reassign the color of that point to be whatever color matches the apple on, that's underneath it. Now this is going to take some setup. First of all, let's drag our apple object on top of the apple picture. Next, I need to be able to see the vector points and also to be able to see the picture of the apple. To do this, open up your layers palette, I'm going to drag ours off, and you can see that I've got my vector black object in layer 2 and the picture of the apple on layer 1. To be able to see the vector points, I'm going to hold down my command button, command key, and click on the little eyeball visibility icon. This will give me an outline of the eyeball and it will also show me the outline of the vector points. So now I can see both the vector mesh and the picture below it. Next step is to use the direct selection tool, the little white arrow, to select the individual points and to use the eyedropper tool to select the individual color. So I've got my direct selection tool. I'm going to click on this one anchor point. So I've only got that anchor point selected. Then I'm going to use my eyedropper tool and I'm going to click on an area just outside of that area. With it selected, what I've, redone, what I've done is reassign that color to be that shape. If I hold down command and click on my eyeball, you can see that's what it looks like. Let's continue doing this for the rest of them. Choose your direct selection tool, select the next anchor point, choose your eyedropper, and choose an area that's just below it. Direct selection tool, anchor point, eyedropper tool just below it. Let's turn on and see what we got so far. So far so good. It doesn't look like it's much, but once they all come together it'll really work out. Here's a faster method of working. Instead of having to swap between the eyedropper and the direct selection tool, it would be great if I can just hold down one key and go back and forth. Well, you can. What I'm going to do, oops, let me zoom back out, excuse me, is I'm going to hold down my option key, excuse me, my command key. My command key will swap back and forth between the last two tools that I use. In this case, my direct selection tool. When I let go of the command key, I get my eyedropper. So command, click, eyedropper and click. Command, click, eyedropper, click. So now it's going a lot quicker. And you can see I'm just going outside of that particular area. Another thing to know is don't forget to do the edges of your artwork as well. This will take a little bit of time, but you can see after a while it'll be well worth it. So I'm going to go very quickly and get all of these holding on command and clicking on the individual point Great. So I've done most of this area. Let's turn on layer 2 and see what we got. Now you can see the colorization is starting to really come together. I don't just have one particular shade of red. I've got all these different shades of red starting to blend together. Once I do it to the rest of this object, the entire apple will look like one natural looking area. Then I can go back in and start adding the smaller details such as the highlights and other little details that I wanted to that would be too difficult with the gradient mesh.